Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 221 of the Arc Junkies podcast. Today, I'm chatting with Dusty James from Pacific Arc TIG Welding on YouTube and Instagram. Dusty just achieved a major accomplishment on his YouTube channel and is also releasing a new TIG welding training program complete with a textbook made just for people looking to learn the art of manipulating molten metal with the gas tungsten arc welding process. We discuss what Dusty's been up to and how he balances everything that's going on in his life. We'll get right into the show right after an event and giveaway announcement and a quick word from the supporters of the show. This weekend, I'll be at the Kentucky Welding Institute Annual Welding Competition taking place this Saturday, April 23rd. The event's going to kick off on the 22nd with a casual event with live music, food, shop tours, and a chance to chat with some of your favorite people in the welding industry like Stephanie Hoffman, Jacob Schofield, John Weslow, Ray Ripple, and many more. In addition, I'll be doing a giveaway at the event. All the supporters of the Arc Junkies podcast have chipped in to make this an awesome giveaway. I have products from Lincoln Electric, Isotunes, Rock Mount Research and Alloys, Weld Porn, CK Worldwide, Strong Hand Tools, Fronius USA, Blue Demon, and many more. All you have to do is stop by and sign up for the giveaway. I'll also be passing out sticker packs for everyone who registers for the giveaway. In addition, I'll be doing podcasts and Instagram Lives while I'm up there. You don't want to miss this event. If you're a high school student, be sure to sign up for the event online at www.kwi.us. You can find out more details on any of the social media platforms or by calling 606-849-WELD. The competition is going to consist of a 2G and 3G test with backing using an 8th inch diameter 7018. Last year had over 100 competitors from 17 different states, and this year shaping up to be even bigger. I'll see you on Saturday. Today's episode of the Arc Junkies podcast is brought to you by Rock Mount Research and Alloy. Rock Mount's team knows what it's like to fix something the right way. They also know when something isn't fixed correctly, it's not fixed at all. Rock Mount's complete assortment of welding alloys are specifically designed for maintenance applications, and their network of sales reps are technically trained to find the right product for your needs. Using Rock Mount, you're going to make the highest quality welds, saving you time, money, and aggravation. We all know downtime is expensive and your time is limited. As a matter of fact, downtime and rework cost 300% more than it does to do it right the first time. That's where Rock Mount comes in. They don't believe in short-term solutions. Instead, they partner with you to weld stronger so your equipment can last longer. Check out Rock Mount's website to tackle your biggest welding challenges and get the most common repair done right once and for all. They have rod and wire for every application or repair for construction equipment, farming equipment, cast alloys, unidentifiable alloys, hard facing, and more. Head on over to rockmountwelding.com today and see what solutions they have for your biggest welding problem. Get the job done right the first time, every time with Rock Mount. We're also brought to you by Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. Have you seen the new 330 MPX engine drive welding machine? This thing is awesome. The Ranger 330 MPX EFI welder generator is built for all seasons. The advanced electronic fuel injection delivers quick starts, improved fuel efficiency, and optimal performance in high altitude applications and extreme temperatures. In addition to the engine, the modern design and advanced features allow this machine to streamline welding operations and improve efficiency on the job site. It's smaller. The Ranger 330 MPX EFI welder generator has up to 20% smaller footprint and is up to 25% lighter than other machines in its class. It transports the field at less bulk and less effort, leaving you more room for other tools and accessories you need for the job site. It's smarter. The 330 MPX EFI welder generator's digital user interface offers a suite of advanced technologies that improve weld performance and productivity. It has quick setup with ready set weld. ArcFX technology, Crosslink technology, and Chopper technology. It has high quality operations with clean AC generator up to 10 kilowatts of continuous power. Plenty of power at 330 amps at 28 volts for 100% duty cycle when welding up to quarter inch 7018 electrodes. It has a direct connect for the Magnum Pro 250 LXGT spool gun and arc gouging capabilities up to 3 16 carbon electrodes. Get your 330 MPX today for 10% off when you go to store.lincolnelectric.com and use Arc Junkies 10 at checkout. You can also get 20% off all gear and accessories when you use Arc Junkies 20. Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. We're also brought to you by Fronius USA. Fronius is the innovation leader in arc welding. Their attention to arc precision and energy management has created some of the best arc welders and welding processes on the market. From cold metal transfer to the first battery powered welder, Fronius continues to push the limits of welding technology. This year, Fronius is releasing the new multi-process iWave. This machine offers full MIG, MAG, TIG, and stick capabilities, allowing users to experience maximum flexibility and upgradability. Fronius, now a global company, started as a family-owned business over 75 years ago. This year marks the 20th anniversary for Fronius USA. 
celebrations and giveaways are going to be announced. Watch the Fronius USA Facebook and Instagram pages for your chance to participate. Fronius USA is excited to share its new promotion with Arc Junkies listeners. Starting April 15th through June 30th, you can order a Trans Steel 2200 Compact and get a second MIG torch setup. It's a $500 value, absolutely free. The Trans Steel 2200 is a compact 3-in-1 solution for MIG, MAG, TIG, and stick welding. The 2200 is easy to use, reliable, and has the intelligent Fronius Arc. Set up your free torch for a quick changeover or keep it as a spare. The choice is yours. This promotion is only valid in the USA. All right, you know what time it is. Fire up your machine, drop your hood, and turn me up five. This is Stephanie Hoffman from Underground Metalworks, and you're listening to the Arc Junkies Podcast. Listening to the Arc Junkies Podcast. Helping you make every weld better than your last with each episode. And now your host, Jason Becker. All right, Dusty, welcome back to the podcast, man. Hello, my friend. Thank you for having me back. Oh, no problem. It's, uh, it was a no brainer. How, uh, how you been out there? Good. It's been, uh, we were chatting before we got going, but it's, it's busy, but it's the best busy. It's all good. It's the balance between my own business stuff, my job, two kids trying to mow the lawn. Yeah. That's, <laughs> actually, that's one of the things that's kind of how I wanted to start off the episode is like, how do you maintain a good work life balance? Because I mean, you're, you're working, you got a wife, you got a kids, uh, you got family, and I mean, all, all all that stuff just takes so much attention and, you know, focus. And, you know, you, you got the YouTube channel. Congratulations on hitting 100K, uh, Thank you, by man. the way. But, I mean, how do, you, how do you balance all that stuff out, you know, kind of going through day-to-day, figuring things out? I don't know, man. I was going to ask you for advice. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's been crazy, man. It's, um, like, long answer short, not a lot of time for, like, the stuff I want to do. <laughs> like, um, I've been like, so I'm still working my full-time job. I'm doing YouTube and then online students every day, Monday to Friday. Uh, and then weekend is usually filming more YouTube and stuff. And then, but yeah, it's like, so that's like definitely a priority. Um, but like, the, sorry, if you can hear them in the background, the kids, the, my kids are like the absolute priority, my wife and my kids. Um, and yeah, dude, like I really structure my time around my kids to be off my phone and away from my computer, um, which is a challenge. So it just unfortunately leaves me with like waking up at four in the morning, <laughs> like even on weekends, it's, I allow myself like a little bit of time here and there just to sleep in a little bit and chill. But yeah, it's just early mornings, man. And like, I think last time you and I talked about it, it was being like as organized as possible with like planning my weeks out and like really being aware of what I have coming up. Cause I'm, I'm such an idiot right now, dude. Like I just, <laughs> I'm so forgetful. I got a lot going on and I just like, yeah, if I don't write it down, I'm going to forget it. So yeah. that's, that's kind of like the biggest thing. It's just trying to remember to get organized, write things down. I've, I've found it very helpful to use the alarm app on my phone. Like the little in the clock app, you can set alarms. So I've got yep. like daily reminders for like all kinds of stuff. So if I got something to do tomorrow and it could be something as stupid as like, Hey, you know, like throw the, you know, throw this tool in the car, you know, when I get home today, because I'm going to need that tomorrow. Just, yeah, just so it doesn't slip through the cracks. You know, that it's just like, it just seems there's so much going on. Like I just need constant reminders to, to do simple things. Yeah. Yeah. Siri has helped me out a lot. <laughs> just asking Siri to set a reminder for this or that. Cause like, like it just, yeah, like you say, like grabbing a tool or like I bought insurance for my truck like last week, but I knew I was going to forget to put the stickers on my license plate. <laughs> so it's like, just before we started recording, it was like a little ding. It said, put your, put your stickers on your license plate. So <laughs> now, yeah, after work, like I had to stop by my kid's school to, uh, I got to get my ID scanned to be a volunteer or whatever, like some new system that they have over there. But I had to okay. set an alarm yesterday to remind myself, I was like, okay, you know, I'll probably get out of work around three thirty, So I'll be heading home around four. 
I'll set the alarm for like four o'clock to remind me to like pop in there and do that. And sure enough, man, four o'clock, I was like, what, what's, what's the alarm going off for now? And I look at it and I was like, oh yeah, I got to swing by the school. <laughs> totally would have forgot. Yeah. But I, I think it's trying to like, and I, I should probably definitely get a planner, but then I, I got to set a reminder to write everything down in the planner. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, that adds another level of more organization, which I don't know if that helps or hurts. Yeah. <laughs> And then you, I mean, you're doing, like you said, like late nights and early mornings and stuff. I caught your last video where you were up to like two o'clock in the morning, well, past two o'clock in the morning, welding out that, or that piece and then finished it up the next day. And that dude, that piece turned out insane. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that's what it comes down to, man. It's like, um, well, you know, like there's just, I don't know. When I wake up the next day, like, I just don't want to have a bunch of stuff coming at me and it's like that's 100% gonna happen whether it was like that project I was working on or even like keeping up with like students and like you know projects I got going on online it's like I would rather put the work in the night before to get a bunch of stuff done or at least ready and then the, the next morning like there's nothing worse than like sitting down with your coffee and you just like see an email and just feel that panic of like, Oh no, I forgot <laughs> like yeah. to get ready for that. It's such a horrible feeling, man. And I just, it happens too often. Like I'm just, I'm just such an airhead sometimes, dude. It's I try, I try really hard. <laughs> I don't think it's being an airhead. I think it's like, you know, having a lot of irons in the fire at one time, you know, cause like, like you said, you, you've got a lot going on. I mean, between the channel running your own programs, uh, you know, the, the volunteer stuff that you do hanging with the wife, hanging with the kids, uh, you know, your full-time job, like all that stuff. It's, it's a lot, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's a blast though. Like, honestly, it's been, it's been so much the last, I'd say three months. Like my wife has started to help me out with like a lot of my email stuff. Um, she's helped me out a ton with that. I legitimately couldn't get a ton without her help right now. But like for as wild as it's getting is getting exciting. Like, I feel like, like I finished my new program and dropped it like two weeks or a week and a half ago or something. And it was like the craziest feeling. Like I've been, I was working on that project for almost a full year and it was some capacity every day, whether it was just to fix a little bit of code in the program or to actually film a huge lesson and edit it. Like it was nonstop. So to have finally like push that over the hill and let it like coast a little bit has been such a good feeling. <laughs> I just can't describe it. The funny thing is, though, is I finished that and then I was like, oh, rad, I have all this time now. I can like afford to like not stress about this project. And what's the first thing I do is I start like planning more projects I want to do. <laughs> Your own worst enemy. <laughs> Trying to, yeah, fully. <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about the project that you're working on. It's the, the TIG welding fundamentals course that you just released. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So it's, so the la like how long ago was it that we talked last on the podcast? It's like oh, a year. It's, yeah. It's been over a year. Okay. Wow. That's crazy. Um, so the program was like, it was all online and it was the same curriculum plus a bunch of extra stuff um, that I take people through when I'm teaching them in person. Um, so my idea was like, I've been taking students through this program one by one, uh, for two and a half years or something. And yeah, it was like just time to add a bunch of stuff. I wanted to redo it. I have learned to film things better since, um, I've gotten way better, like ideas, of things I need to put in the program to help people when they get stuck. Um, I'm always there to help each student out of course, but like there's a lot of stuff that like, you know, all they need to see is like a good example of if your thing looks like this, this is the problem and you need to go back to this lesson at this time. And um, so that's what it was. It was completely restructuring the whole thing to be kind of like self-sufficient, start to finish, like started the most basic stuff, build somebody up with like a good understanding of like, you know, how to set up the machine, how to set up the torch, understand what does what, um, like a really, really good grasp from the bottom up. And then at each point through the program, like there's 22 lessons and, you know, say in like lesson, you're in the well, the first welding lesson, like learning your stuff. And then you encounter problems. There's like checkpoints 
for the, I did checkpoints for the whole thing. So if somebody's encountering, you know, this problem, this is the timestamp of the lesson you need to go back to that'll help you out to oh, wow. take care of this problem. And so the whole thing's like a map. I, I pictured, dude, when I was like mapping it out to like plan it, it look, I, my wall looked like one of those dudes that hunts like serial killers with like the red <laughs> string all over the right. It was like, you know, really connecting everything so that it was like a program that like I, of course, am going to help the students out with, but it's going to answer a lot of the questions for them. But more importantly, I really wanted to teach them to answer some of these questions for themselves. Um, that's been one of the biggest things that's kind of got me to where I am with TIG welding is being able to identify and troubleshoot a problem, learn from it, and then learn how to continue on without that problem or knowing how to deal with that problem in the future. So that was the biggest thing. I wanted it to be like kind of self-sufficient to help people out and give them a better well-rounded understanding of why things are happening. Even when it's going good, like why is it going good kind of, give them a great idea either way, how it's going. But another thing I did was I made a textbook. Um, I don't know. I, I shared some samples of it on my Instagram. You can check it out. I did the whole thing like a really sweet comic book and it's like almost 200 pages long. I made the entire thing myself and I had to learn like program, how to graphic design and everything. And so each lesson has its own textbook that goes with it. And it follows everything. It has all the timestamps in it as well. Um, so every student can literally have that like printed off, take it into their welding shop and like follow along page by page. And yeah, they can see visual examples of all the things that I'm talking about in the program. Yeah. It's just to give people more resources on how to follow along and That's keep them on really track. Cool. Thanks man. It, it's, it's pretty sweet. I, I was like, I don't know about you, but like I had a tough time with textbooks and stuff in school. Yeah. I found them like pretty boring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like, well, usually I tell you, I doodle textbooks, like draw a bunch of dumb stuff in them. So I was like, I'll just make a textbook that like has a bunch of cool stuff in it. And it's, it's also like a combination of like, I have kept welding projects I've done for the past two and a half years. Like if I film a demo for a student who's stuck on something, I've kept all those samples that I've welded and sent back. So I have like photos of every single problem that my students usually encounter. It's boom right in front of them for everything. Oh, nice. I think that, yeah. that's the biggest thing to teach, you know, when, when you, whether you're doing like uh, a class in person or a class remotely or anything like that is trying to teach the troubleshooting. Okay. Here's, here's the result that you came up with. What caused the issue? You know, just, you know, helping people kind of figure out, you know, what, you know, what did I, what did I do wrong? Was it a, a gas issue? Was it the, the arc length? Was it the work angle, the, the travel angle, the travel speed, you know, too much amperage, not enough amperage, you know, was it too hot, too cold, like all this stuff. And, you know, as welders, we're visual people. So I think, you know, you doing a textbook that's kind of based off of like a comic book with a lot of different graphics or, you know, notes instead of like full paragraphs, that's going to help people out a lot more, you know, because it's like instantaneous. And then once you start understanding what each of the different variables do now you can start like you said analyze it once you get done and then kind of make the corrections and go from there and then not make that same mistake again yes yeah man it's kind of like giving people enough that they feel like i've got their backs and i can like help them to see these things but like i was working with two people here um today and we were stuck on something and it was kind of like, I got into the process of like, I had already explained some stuff to them. And I was like, remember what we talked about earlier? What happens when we do this? And they were like, Oh yeah. Like they kind of answer the questions for themselves. That was like a big thing for me when I was learning. Um, yeah. Having the ability to kind of break down your own work is really important for me. And yeah, to be able to help people out with that is, is really cool. And to be able to do it in a way that like I would have genuinely been stoked to see when I was learning is it's been pretty fun. I started sharing it with like my students that were already in the program and they were, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a hit. I really enjoyed sharing it with people. They just, it's so bright and colorful. And like you say, like the photos are just so clear with like arrows pointing right to where I'm talking about. And yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun to make. Very cool. And I think once, once people start to kind of understand and, you know, like to the, to the level that they can kind of teach themselves, you know, cause a lot of people, they don't have the time or the resources to go through 
like a full fledged welding school. A lot of schools are like six months, but you know, not everybody has that time. We got, everybody's got full-time jobs. They got kids, they got a family, you know, everything that they got to take care of. So being able to like take a, a system like yours and go out in the garage, you know, and hit play or, you know, leaf through the, the, the booklet and just kind of set everything up and go through the paces on their own. I think that, you know, that's, that's really cool. Cause now people, you're, you're getting more people into welding that way. People that can't, you know, they don't, they, they don't have the time or the money to go take a full course. You know, they, they're able to sit down and kind of do it on their own time, 15, 20 minutes here, an hour there. You know, I, I, th- I think that's really cool. And I, I think it's really going to take off for you. Oh, thank you, man. Um, you, you said it like my goal is to get more people into welding. Like we're in a bit of a cool time where like there's so many companies that are making really high quality inverter type TIG machines that are absolutely within budget for a lot of people to get at home and don't require a ton of space. Like it's, it's kind of like kind of weird how accessible TIG welding is um, at this point in time. Like when I first started TIG welding, it was like 2002. Um, and there was like giant transformer type machines that like made a bunch of noise. And like, it's, <laughs> I mean, these things are pretty loud sometimes too, but like, you know what I mean? It's like, somebody can do that. Like they can set it up. Like some of my students like set up just in the corner of like the tiniest little garage and they buy a bunch of stuff from like weld metals online or whatever, or shear it up at their local shop and they're, they're styling. Like they can get good at welding at home. And like part of my biggest thing is like, I really want to give people kind of the chance to get into the trade. Um, whether it's for like a hobby thing, um, or they want to take it seriously. And like, like you say, man, like even myself, like when I went went back to school for like my CWS and like, you know, all the levels before that, it was, it was tough, man. Like I did it with kids and I did it even before I had kids and it was not easy to go back to school. So, you know, now I got two kids, five and two that are like, you know, (laughs) wilding out all the time. It's, it's not possible at the moment, like to get back to school for anything. So it's like this, this trade is too fun, man. There's, there's so many options, whether you want to do it as a hobby, take it super serious, um, use it as a thing to make art, like, or fix car parts or like whatever. It's, it's fun, man. It's so fun. And I just want to like give people something, whether it's my YouTube channel, like you go on my YouTube channel, watch like, I got like 200 episodes of free stuff on there. It's like, I just, I don't know. I just try and put as much out because I really, it, it really does something when I hear somebody hit me up and they're like, I never thought of being into TIG welding until like I started watching a bunch of stuff online and now I want to do it. It's like, like, it doesn't even have to be my channel. It can be like whoever's channel. And it's, uh, it's just cool, man. It's like the growth in the trade is something I really want to play a part in. And I kind of like was dipping my toe into it like over the last couple of years, but I feel like, yeah, it's time to really like, make a push and help people out as much as possible. I definitely think you're a part of it now. Like I said, the the artwork that you put out is just, it's on a whole different level. And I mean, it's going to inspire so many people to pick up a TIG torch. And like you said, like all these machines, they're relatively affordable and hell I've had students that, you know, they're like, Oh yeah. You know, I went home last night and I was welding in my kitchen because they're like (laughs) in an apartment, you know, so they just move the stove out of the way, crack the window or something. And they're like, got a little TIG welding set up in the kitchen to practice at home. But, you know, I think the, like I said, the, the artwork is, it's getting more people interested because there's so much you can do with welding. It's not just structural steel and getting out there on the pipeline. I mean, definitely you can earn a good living that way, but it's also like, it can be a creative outlet. You know, not, yeah. not everybody's destined to go off and, and be like a production welder or something like that. But I mean, you can do it as a hobby. There's a lot of people that, you know, do some really cool woodworking stuff that they're not carpenters by day. You know, they're, they're not finished trim carpenters or, you know, they're, they're not roughing in frames or anything or, or setting up, you know, studs and, and joists and stuff out on the job site, you know, like they're accountants or something like that. And then they come home on the, you know, and then they build like a beautiful cutting board or, you know, like a keepsake box or anything like that. And like, it's just, I think it's really cool to, regardless of, you know, what type of work you're doing with welding, as long as you're welding, it's awesome. Absolutely, man. I can't agree more. Like, <laughs> I think that's why you and I get along so well. <laughs> yeah. It's, I think like, you know, we're in the trade and we've done it for a long time. Like, I think we've kind of like a lot of welders perhaps feel the same way, but like 
getting to work with so many people who aren't technically welders, quote unquote, it's really made me realize like how awesome this trade is. Like, cause like you say, like I have people in my program, like I have two guys in it right now that are, they work in finance, like at a bank. And like, I have people who are retired who just, you know, had nothing to do with welding, but just wanted to learn it. And they're like more obsessed about it than anything you could imagine. Like they're so thrilled to be learning this process of welding. And like, I, I fully admit, like I've definitely been stuck in the grind before. Where I'm like, yeah, it's just my job. Like I just do this all day and kind of check out when I go home. It's like, it, you know, I still love it obviously, but like, I think a lot of people forget like how cool the trade is. And it's like you say, there's people that don't necessarily have jobs being quote unquote welders, but like will love it and grow the trade in some way, whether it's just learning for themselves at home or like, yeah, it's cool, man. There's, there's a lot of people out there that I feel like this trade could reach and really help. I know it's helped me a lot with a lot of stuff in my life personally. And yeah, I just, yeah, it's cool to think how many people it could touch out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just did um, last weekend. I did the weld demos for Lincoln electric at sun and fun. So it's like a big, you know, airplane convention, you know, it's the second largest one in the U S and like wow. people fly in from all over the place to come check out the air show. And Lincoln does, you know, they do classes like two times a day throughout the entire week and then one on Sunday. But it's it's people from all mm -hmm. different walks of life. They're not like professional welders. They're out there, you know, just kind of mingling in the crowd, but they'll stop into the booth and we'll be like, hey, you know, you want you want to give it a shot? And we'll do like a, oh. a little quick lesson right there. And it was all, this time it was all TIG, TIG welding. Um, well, we did a little bit of MIG also. But that was the cool thing. Like, no, it wasn't a bunch of welders rolling in. It was like, you know, people that are on the verge of retirement or somebody that just wants to tinker around in their garage or, you know, a, a little kid. I mean, hell, we had one dude come in and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, he just wanted some information on, you know, different welding machines. He's like, I'm, I, I think, you know, I want to get one of these for my son because he's always wanted to get into welding. And, uh, you know, I, I think I want to get him a welder for Christmas. And we're like, oh, yeah, how, how old's your son? And this, this guy's like, he's old, right? And he's like, oh, he's, he's 67 this year. And I was oh, like, no way. damn. And he's like, he's getting, you know, and this guy must have been like in his mid-80s. But, I mean, he was buying a TIG machine for his son because it's something he always wanted to do. Now, he wasn't, neither one of them were welders. But, uh, you know, now that he's heading into retirement, it's an awesome hobby to pick up. Wow. Man, that puts such a big smile on my face. Like, I just, I love hearing that stuff. It's, it's so cool. Yeah, there's so many people out there, man. And it's cool that, like, you get the opportunity to do that type of stuff. Like, that would be definitely a goal of mine in the future is to connect with people, like, on a ground level at something like that. And yeah, it's cool, man. That's that's amazing. Yeah, it's a, and it's a lot of fun, like, showing somebody, you know, and they, they get really excited, you know, when they figure out, you know, how to, how to run the torch and the foot pedal at the same time. And then you introduce the filler rod and you're like, okay, you know, here's how you do this. And that it's like all about tempo. And like, I mean, you know, like you, you get a rhythm and stuff and that's that, I mean, that helps out so much and you play guitar. So, I mean, you can relate. I, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but you know, like when you start TIG welding, like you just get into that rhythm, you know, and once they, once they get it and the, you know, it's starting to click and they're not dipping the tungsten anymore and they're, they're getting that little ripple pattern, you know, just the, the smile, the reaction that they get, you know, that it's finally clicking and coming together and everything. It's priceless to, to see somebody kind of go through that experience. It, it really is, man. It, like the, the word priceless is perfect for it too. Like even the two students I had here today, one guy was like zero experience, like never even put a helmet on it. He just kind of wanted to come and check it out with, with his friends and like, uh, yeah, I don't know how old these guys would have been. Probably like one guy was like late fifties and the other guy was like, I don't know, some 40, something like that, maybe around there. And it was like, you know, the one guy with a bit of experience was like getting it. And I was helping him out with like some stuff he wanted to work on. And then he, <laughs> he just got the helmet on the other guy. I was like, look, all we're going to do is start out with these simple things. And it, you just set people up for any kind of win. And they're thrilled. Like it, it takes nothing. Like they're just in disbelief. Like, Holy crap. Like I, I did it. Like yeah. I did a, a, a pass, like an autogenous pass or something like that. And it's, yeah, it's cool, man. And you see the effect it has on people. And like, I know people straight up who have had like really hard personal problems. Um, I worked with this one guy who I was teaching for a while 
this is a crazy story. This dude was in jail ever since he was like 18 and he was about mid forties and he was like an ex heroin addict in jail for like, like, I don't even want to say it's, it's not my business to share, but it was nuts. Um, he had had a really tough go of it in prison and he had somehow gotten out, uh, at some point and ended up working with us and I was helping him to learn how to weld and like, it legitimately helped him with like a lot of personal problems and it kept him out of trouble. You know, he had a purpose is something that he was really stoked on. And like, yeah, it was, it was, it meant a lot to me to work with that dude and like work with, I get to work with people. Like I've worked with like some troubled youth and stuff as well. And it's, yeah, man, it makes a difference on people. And to just like, I don't know, that's something like my YouTube channel is fun. Cause it's like right now I just do it here. And I kind of like just do whatever I'm, I can get time to do, but I think I'd like to try and take on a more of like a, a vibe of that kind of thing as well. Like just, I don't know, try and spread the impact that it can make with people and find people who could really benefit from an opportunity like that and help them out. Yeah. And that's the cool thing about your YouTube channel is it's not a hundred percent technical. It's not a hundred percent artwork. It's a nice mix of like, here's a tutorial on how to, you know, get into TIG welding. Here's something a little bit more advanced. Here's how, you know, we're wrapping corners in this video, but you know, here's a video of me doing some of my artwork or, you know, here's the painting process that I'm doing, or, you know, you just started doing airbrushing. So you're incorporating that in there now. And then the different designs and the process, like everything is, is wide open, you know, so you can show up to your YouTube channel just to be entertained, or you can show up and learn something, you know, so it's, you've got a really good balance and a good mix. It's not just like, you know, I'm teaching welding, you know, and that's, that's all we're doing, or I'm, I'm doing artwork. It's, it's a nice mix of, of everything. And I think you do it really well and you present the content and the material really well, whether it's, you know, a how to video or, you know, like, here's how I'm doing this, you know, for, for the, you know, the type of work that you do, the commissions, the pieces and stuff. Um, so it's a good balance between education and entertainment. Oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. It's, um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of put it together how I would enjoy it myself. And I kind of, yeah, I don't know. There's so many channels out there, man. Like there's like obviously welding tips and tricks, like Justin, the fab series, uh, um, Justin Voss, like um, Tim Wells, like I could go on forever. There's so many channels that are just great. And I, I think we even talked about this last time, but it's just, there's something for everybody out there. It's such a good time for people to learn, um, online, even just to get a taste of it and just kind of see what it's all about. Like everyone's got their own style and it's, it's just awesome. Like if so, like whatever, someone watches mine and they don't like it, it's all good. There's like other channels that are equally as awesome. Just yeah. Different delivery. And I just kind of do it the way I enjoy doing it. And it's obviously like it's, cha it changes over time. I have like a huge, I actually went to like visual arts school for filmmaking. And, um, I went for two years right out of high school and I actually started at the shop I was at, um, after school hours so I could make enough money to buy alcohol and like party with my friends. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how I got into welding. I started hanging out with these people and I just really loved the trade and that's where I started to learn. But yeah, so anyway, um, getting into filmmaking was like, it's kind of awesome how that's come full circle for me as well. Um, messing around with better cameras and like the footage I'm getting is just like really fun to do. Um, watching it when I'm breaking down the edits and stuff and putting it together. It's like, damn, this is like, this is something I would genuinely really enjoy watching. It's just, it, in my opinion, I think it looks pretty awesome. I try and communicate things as like quickly and, you know, efficiently as I can. And, yeah. Just make it fun. Like fun, dude. It's gotta be fun. It can't be boring. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I just wouldn't have learned from anything boring. So it's like, I just, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of put my own spin on it and hopefully people enjoy it. Oh, people are definitely enjoying it. Like I said, you just hit a hundred K on, on YouTube, man. That's no easy feat. <laughs> yeah. Thanks man. It's been, it's been a marathon. <laughs> what would that, would that feel like, like getting that package in the mail and kind of opening that thing up? Um, well, it was like, I was, we kind of talked about before we started the podcast, like, I don't really, pay, I, I pay attention a little bit to my numbers and just see where things are at. Um, but I don't get like super like pumped about a lot. I just kind of 
do my thing and it's that's just cool to watch it grow but yeah 100k it was like okay I, th- I gotta acknowledge this like this is cool and um yeah i did like a big thank you like right away on my instagram and just like like i appreciate everything so much from people that check out my show it's like it sincerely means a lot to me when people drop nice comments and like just reach out to send me nice messages. It's cool. So yeah, to get that. And then like the thing showed up in the mail this morning and I was like, <laughs> I opened it with my kids and they were kind of asking like, what is this? And I'm like, well, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's a, a major award. It's kind of like an award. And of course they don't know what an award is because they're kids. And I'm like, well, it's like a trophy because I made a show on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're like, okay, whatever. Yeah, like, whatever, dad. <laughs> Go back and play with my Play-Doh. Yeah, you play with your Play-Doh, you're going to learn to weld, whether you like it or not someday, kiddo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's really cool. But, you, like I said, man, congratulations. You've done a super cool job putting everything together. And, like, I know editing, I mean, is that, like, it, it's a painstaking process, kind of go through and, and just to get everything just right and make sure you've got all the right angles and the right audio over it and you're not tripping over your words and, you know, like, everything that goes into it. I mean, like, for... I mean, you, you, you've been doing it for a while, though, but, I mean, it, it typically takes just as long to edit or twice as long to edit as it does to just record the material. Yeah, you know what it's like, man. It's it's like when you finish recording, like, the work just begins. You're like, you know, it's, it's such a package at that point that you can do so much with. Um, like, crafting an edit is... You, you almost change the script of everything. Like you, you think, Oh, this play, this piece is a little bit clunky. Like maybe I'll put this piece here. So it has better context by the time I get to it. And like, you know, I don't really like how I did that. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to put a, like <laughs> shoot something else and then go do a voiceover. So it communicates better. And you know, the funny thing is, though, I'm, I, it's never good enough. Like I still, when the episode comes out, I I've kept up an episode a week for, almost three years now, I guess. And Damn. I'm like, I'm always like, ah, I wish I could go reshoot that, but I just, I'm out of time at that point. And uh, get I out. just, yeah. And I, I just love it, man. Like, it's just so fun. Like it's like making a welding project that I know is going to be seen by quite a few people. So not only do I want to weld really well, I want to communicate it really well. And I want to represent it really well. So the representing it really well is actually probably the most work to like craft and edit that like works and people enjoy. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) now when, when you're like filming your videos, are you kind of like in your own zone and like you're, you're just filming the the stuff because I mean like a lot of your stuff's like voiceover work, but are you just kind of like out there in your own element and you're just filming what you're doing and then you go back and kind of do the voiceover work after the fact? Or do you go into um, a video and you kind of got like a set list, you know, of, of different arc shots you got to get and angles and, you know, specific things that are going to be part of that video? Yeah, that, dude, that's a really good question. Um, I write everything in advance. Like I write a script, if you want to call it a script. It's just cr- crazy notes on my iPad. But um, I like write everything how I want to, what I want to include as far as content, like what I want to say. And then I go back and I trim a bunch of stuff to make it like, more direct to the point. And then I like start to think about things that I could show as demonstrations, whether it's a specific subject or just overlay or something. Um, And then I'll write that into the script. So like, as I come in here to set up, I'll be like, you know, going through my script and be like, yo, take, take a look at this clip here. Let's break this down. And then I start, I just continue talking. Like I just film the whole thing in one big blast and then I go put it on my computer and I start to edit it so that it flows like the, as a speech by itself. And then, yeah, it's usually a couple more days in here to film whatever it is I'm talking about or I need. Um, and I'm so bad, man. Like I should totally save footage because <laughs> there's like so many things. I'm like, I've filmed this so many times. Like how many times can you film like a lap weld? <laughs> it's like, man, but I just, I never, I don't know. I'm sorry to get, to get better at it, but it's like, I don't know, man. I, and the thing is I just film better. or I think of better ways to film things and I just want to keep improving my footage. So it's like every week I come back in here, I got like, you can see behind me, I got like a camera slider now, which is like added a cool, like dimension to things. And like, 
yeah, just better things, better focus, better lighting. And yeah, just, just constant improvement, man. So it's like, that's kind of the flow of how it goes. I like write heavy, I record, and then it's like kind of collect myself after that to see what I need to get at that point and then come back and do more work. <laughs> yeah, I feel you on that one. It's, it's, I mean, it's the same thing with the podcast. Like I'm, I'm my own worst critic and trying to keep up with new episodes, keep everything fresh, keep it entertaining, you know, make sure it's released on time. Cause that's, that's the one thing that I kind of hold myself to, as I said, I'm going to put out an episode a week. And then Good for you, man. for some reason That's in so January, cool. I, I shot myself in the foot and it was like, you know what? I'm going to do two episodes a week. I'm going to do one like regular interview style. And then I'm going to do one that's like a technical information piece. And yeah, okay. so I was like, damn, why did I do that to myself? <laughs> it's like, but it, it's, it's a really cool goal. It's a good challenge. And like you said, it's a constant state of improvement, you know? So that, yes. that kind of like, I went out and bought a new microphone. I got a new boom, you know, for, for the microphone, new headphones, you know, just trying to improve in the quality of the sound that's coming out because like bad video is easier to watch than bad audio is to listen to, you know, that's same thing. That's so why true. another reason why I'm setting up the new studio in the backyard, but I don't have time for that because I'm too busy podcasting and, and doing my full-time gig. But eventually my, my studio is going to be complete, but it's like you said, a constant state of improvement. You know, you're like, how can I make, how can I make this better? How can it, as, as cheesy as it sounds, it's like the tagline that I've, that I've always had for a while, make every well better than your last. You know, you start applying that to different things in your life, like make every podcast better than your last, make every YouTube video better than your last. I don't want to recycle old footage. You know, I want to come up with something new and fresh every single time. So yeah, instead of using sure. previous footage as a crutch, you know, you're challenging yourself to, okay, I got to get back out there. I don't like the way that looks. I got to reshoot that. Or, you know, yes. I, I didn't like the, the audio on that. I'm going to go ahead and scrub that and record it again. And like when I was doing videos for YouTube, like way back, you know, we'd, we'd be sitting in there editing everything and be like, this isn't quite right. And like gear up and then like back to the lab and let's, let, let's film that part again because, you know, we, did, we didn't get the right angle or, you know, it's kind of a fuzzy shot, you know, so let's go ahead and, and do this because we don't want to put out a, a subpar content. You know, you want everything to be nice. You don't want to regress in everything that you're putting out, you know, you, you want to make it better every single episode. Yeah, that's great, man. That, mean, that means you're going to continue to, you know, go far with what you're doing. Cause yeah, I mean, it, it could be easier just to stick to one episode a week or whatever, but it, the, the, the growth just gets compounded when you push it a little bit. And then, you know, I, like we talked about organization and stuff earlier and that's like, that, that has to happen at that point when you start to take on more workload. It's like, you know, I took on an extra two students a week, um, just a few months ago. So it's like, you know, my days are very full with student work and it's, I had to like buck up and get like a better system for keeping track of everything. And, and then now it's, it's like butter, like it just gets better. Right. And now it's like, I've increased my capacity for, taking on that extra stuff. And I mean, who knows, I may have like a nervous breakdown in like a year, yeah. <laughs> but like, but yeah, no, that's great, man. Like, I think, especially when you get the new studio, like there's something about like, I mean, your, your space you have there is awesome, but like for the amount of work you're putting in to put that together, like, dude, just think about like sitting down in that chair and like getting to work in a new environment. That's, that's really exciting, man. That's, that's like your, your hard work is paying off and it, it's going to make it more exciting to, to get down to work. Yeah. And I'm super stoked. Cause I know that like once, once I'm in the studio, it's going to be a completely different mindset as, as silly as that sounds. But I, I think, you know, once, once everything's done and everything finally comes together, it's going to be like a sigh of relief. Like I can finally sit back and relax. Cause it's something I've been pushing for damn, almost two years. Like when I, when I took over the podcast and started doing it and I was like, yeah, it'd be kind of cool. I was looking, I was actually considering like, renting out a space because it was like originally I was like I, I don't know what I want to do with this podcast you know I, I took it over and you know I'm, I'm putting out content you know I'm, I'm keeping up my end of the bargain but it just became more you know like you said you start getting those messages hey man you know this this episode helped me for, with this that and everything and you're like okay this thing's actually reaching some people and you know they appreciate it so let me let me put out more content let me put out fresh content let me put something new out and you know that's kind of driven me to invest in better equipment and try to, 
you know, get the studio up and going. So I, I've got better sound quality in there because I can add a level of soundproofing in there. And then I can kind of shift my schedule around a little bit more because it's going to, you know, now I have my own space to do things. Like you've, you've got like your, yeah. your set up there in the background and everything that you do all your videos and stuff with. That's another thing I'm considering doing is adding, adding a, a video component to it. And I, I don't want to do that with like my garage in the background. Cause I mean, it, it kind of looks cool for what it is, but like, I want to have like a legit setup and it doesn't have to be anything big because it's a, a, what is it? A 10 by 12 shed, but it'll be mine and it'll be like set up and I can customize it and it's going to be awesome. But like, I, like you said, like once you sit down in that chair, once it's all done, everything's come together. It's like, <sighs> you know, it's, I'm ready. You know, that's going to feel, that's going to feel so good, man. Yeah. That's going to feel great. Your, your audience feels it too, man. Like you, you feel better, your quality is better and your audience is like, sure. They enjoy everything. You know, they just appreciate the effort you're putting into it, but they appreciate it and they feel it. It's like, you know, when I came on arc junkies last time, I got like a ton of messages from people that were like, so thrilled that I was going on. Cause they were, they love your show. Like they were like, this is sweet. We can't wait for you guys to hang out. Like, um, it's just, you've got a really rad group of people that listen to the show. And I think like, yeah, man, it, y- the effort you put in is only because you want to like people enjoy it as is. And like you wanting to upgrade microphones and like get a studio and stuff. It, it just like, it just shows how you're taking extra pride in it even though you don't have to like, yeah. you know, anyone can start a podcast with their phone and not, not to downplay anybody who just starts a podcast. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's, it can go, it can, it can be pretty simple, but for people to really form a passion and a pride for what they're doing, like what you're doing, it's like, I don't know, man, it's just, it creates something special for the audience. They really, I, I do truly feel like they, they for sure notice a difference in the quality, but yeah. I just, hope so. I went back and listened to like some of my earlier episodes and I was like, damn, that sounds like hot garbage. Like if, <laughs> if you could hear hot garbage, that's what it sounds like. And, but in that I've, it's even crossed my mind. Like maybe I should go back and delete those episodes or maybe I should go back and redo them. And it's like, no, cause I no, remember, right. you know, when I had Dabs Wellington on the show and I mean like Dabs is a, like, he's a badass TIG welder. And dude, shout out Dabs Wellington. I love that dude. Sean's freaking awesome. But like one of the yeah. cool things that, you know, that I love about Sean is he says, you know, you see where I'm at today. And like, that's, that's what everybody sees, but like go back in my Instagram and like, see where I started. And that's the reason that I won't go back and delete any of my old, you know, any of the old episodes or redo any of the old episodes. Cause maybe somebody listens to this podcast and they're like, Hey, you know, I want to start a welding podcast. And they're like, well, you know, I can't do it as good as this person does. You know, I can't go back and listen to where, it started, you know, so then they can see you don't, you don't have to be like great overnight. Not saying that I'm great now. Cause I'm, I'm far from where I want to be, but you can, you can kind of see the stage of progressions. You can see what people are going through. Like, have you ever went back and looked at like some of your earlier videos? It's, You're laughing. it's tough. It's a, it's a tough watch. <laughs> yeah. But you, you didn't go back and delete them. I mean, like it's, it's there, you know? And then yeah. I think that's, that's the cool thing is like, you don't like get to this level to where you're, you're doing good and you're cranking out awesome content with a new camera and you know, you get all this super slick equipment and stuff in there. You still got that old stuff to like look back at and say, look, look at how far I've come. And it's, it's almost like a, uh, like a digital portfolio or like yeah, a, a yearbook, you know, you can kind of see like, okay, this is where I started. Like I, I've got a picture of my wife, the first podcast I ever did I'm sitting on my bed with my gear because I don't even have a table, don't have a chair, nothing. I've got like a little headset on and my board and it's hooked up to my cell phone. I didn't even have a, a video component yet. And it's like, it's amazing. It's kind of like looking at, um, you know, Bill Gates with Microsoft, you know, he started out of his garage and now he's like in this huge pillar, but like you, you don't want to forget where you come from, like humble beginnings. And it, yeah, man, it's like, it's so funny. Like I almost think back to that stage where, and like nobody was watching my show. Like I had like this, well, I shouldn't say nobody. I had like a really awesome small audience, but like, you know, I, it was like, how did I go through so much work with such like shitty equipment to, and just not quit doing it? Like I just kept doing it. And 
it's, I mean, it's kind of like the way something progresses with anything. It's like, you just keep doing it and eventually it, it grows over time. And, but yeah, I know. I think like you should be proud of like the old stuff, man. Cause a digital portfolio is a perfect word for it. Um, you like, you progress over time and it's great for people to jump back and see the old stuff. Cause like, yeah, people can start a podcast with a phone. People can start a YouTube channel with a phone. It's really easy to do and anyone can start. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just, I don't know. I don't really know where I was going with that, but I think it's just great that you have that stuff still up and it's a great like kind of reference point for how far you've come. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. This segment of the Arc Junkies podcast is brought to you by Everlast Welders. Everlast Welders are built for hobbyist welders, professional welders, and the small business. Head on over to everlastwelders.com right now and check out their full line of stick, MIG, TIG, and multi-process welders, as well as plasma cutters, and see which machine is right for you. And be sure to use Arc Junkies in the comment section at checkout to get that free Nova foot pedal and TIG torch when you buy any machine that comes with a stock foot pedal. Everlast Welders. Weld mean, weld green. We're also brought to you by Stronghand Tools, my favorite fabrication and tooling company. I use my Stronghand table, tooling, and fixture components for every project that I build. They help me increase productivity and accuracy while decreasing the time on the build. Have you had your eye on a new Build Pro table? Now's a great time to get one because Stronghand Tools has a promotion for listeners of the Arc Junkies podcast. Right now, select tables and tools are 10% off with free shipping. Just visit stronghandtools.com backslash promos to check out this latest offer. Now let's get back into the show. It's, it's just like, you know, progression, like kind of how you're going through things. And uh, so like right before the, the podcast started, my buddy down in Texas, uh, Texas Arc Welding tagged me in a video and I watched it and it, it says, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. And I was like, dude, that's, that's freaking brilliant. Like nobody's going to be like an overnight success. That's nobody. I don't think any, anybody's ever been an overnight success. People put in the, the work, the time, the effort, and then, you know, they made it to, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you know, but it, you don't just wake up one morning and then boom, you, you've, you've got it all. You've got to put in the time. You got to put in the effort. You got to put in the work. You've got to make everything you do better than you did the day before. If you want to continue to progress and get better at something. Yeah. For sure, man. Yeah, that's, it's, it's cool. And it's worth the time, whatever your passion is, whether it's welding or making a YouTube channel or martial arts or drawing or like whatever, dude, it's, it's ever, it's worth it for somebody to learn the process of something is like the most important part. Um, you know, it's, uh, the it's corny, corny saying, but like the journey is like, you know, whatever the, the most important part. And it's like, it's the journey, not the it, destination. Yeah. Yeah. Th thank you for thanks. I, I see where you're going it's, with it. Yeah. I tried, I tried, <laughs> um, but it's so true, man. Like it's, you know, I, when I was learning to weld and like, like kind of coming up through school and whatnot, it's, it was a lot of work and it was really overwhelming at times. And at times it felt like I wasn't moving at all. Like it was just frustrating. Um, but even that, even getting stuck and frustrated on something and then overcoming it and like making those achievements, it, it really gives people something to take later in life. Like it's, yeah, I don't know. And especially doing it now, like I, I'm really trying to like instill that in my kids and like show them that like, you know, like my daughter's like super into like, everything so she like you know picks up a bat and tries to hit a ball and she doesn't get it right away and i'm just like that's totally how it works like yeah, we just exactly, start out here, right, right? <laughs> yeah exactly you're doing it right now let's just keep trying and now like it's awesome seeing her and like you know my two-year-old kid my uh, two-year-old son is like kind of the same thing i'm starting to like see that process unfolding for him too and you know it's kids are they're sponges man like it's it's really cool for them to, I kind of want to lead it like, well, no, not kind of, I definitely want to lead as an example of like, you know, working really hard at something and like creating something that whether it's for other people or myself, doesn't matter. Like it's just a process to everything in life that when you find something that you deem worth the effort, like you, you stick with it, you go get it. That's, that's one of the cool things. Like, like you said, like my son, he was, he's big into artwork and he likes to draw little anime characters and stuff like that. But like 
going back, you know, he's got like his, his little portfolios from like where he started, you know, and he's 12 now. So I think he started drawing like around seven and like, just kind of looking at the progression of all this stuff and how much time he spends on YouTube learning how to do like different tutorials and, you know, different drawing styles and, you know, putting that stuff to work in his free time. Cause I mean, he's, he's busy too for a 12 year old, uh, <laughs> as busy as he can be, but oh, I mean, just sure. kind of hone that craft every day, you know, every night before he goes to bed, he's, he's putting in like an hour, hour and a half of like drawing and artwork and like, he'll come out and show us, you know, and it's like, wow, holy shit. You know, he's 12 and he's drawing like this. Where's he going to be in, you know, another five years. Yeah. And it, it, like you said, it's, it's a constant state of progression and, and to watch that kind of unfold and watch his eyes light up when he, he finally gets like the shading right or the shadows or, you know, whatever. Like, I don't know shit about drawing. <laughs> I, 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 I could screw up a stick figure if you give me a pen. Um, but just kind of watching him grow and work through that process and not everything is going to turn out perfect. And instead of ripping it out and throwing it away, he just turns the page. Start over again. You know, and it's the same thing in welding. Like I've put down many a shitty welds and it's like, okay grind it out or grab, you know, new pieces and, and throw something better in there. Now I know, now I know what I did, you know, now I can correct that, you know, kind of like what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode. Once you learn how to, what causes these defects or, you know, the, the outcome, you can, yeah. you can make a change and then you make the next one better. Yeah, for sure. That's like teaching someone the progression of something is really, really important. That's actually like one of my first, lessons in the program in the textbook it's like this is all this is all we're going to be doing for the first week to two weeks it may seem underwhelming but here's where we're going to be by like week eight or something like that so it's like teaching somebody like the trajectory of how this is going to work like it's going to start out boring but in it you know you may even get frustrated and get stuck at the boring stuff like, but it's okay because by the time we get to here, like you're going to be amazed at the, the ground you've covered in the time practicing and yeah, like to go and buzz away in a garage with a purpose, knowing that like, this is all just part of the process is like something that's kind of been pretty important that I include with each student Cause yeah, it's, I don't know, man, there's a lot of things I've tried to learn how to do. Like I, I got really into like BMX riding and stuff and you like sometimes you just feel like you're not going anywhere and that can be pretty defeating for a lot of people so if i can give an example of like no this is common this is just how it works i promise you like you just stick with it stick to the plan i i got you and this is going to be rad and then yeah it's it's awesome to see that unfold you know what you should do and this one thing that i, I considered like before i got out of teaching because like now i'm not in the classroom as much as i'd like to be anymore i kind of oversee the teaching that's being done, but take your, your students that are just coming into this program and the first weld that they do, whether it's a lap, to, a lap joint, T joint, whatever the case may be, have them, have them save that piece and say, okay, I want you to just put one weld on this thing. Do your best. It, no matter what it looks like, I want you to, you know, if it's steel or whatever, or shellac it, you know, make it, make it look good, you know, put put a coating on there so it doesn't rust away and just set that up on a shelf. And then in eight to 10 weeks, I want you to go grab that piece and look at it. Like, I wish, I wish that I had my very first weld so I could actually see the progression that I made. You know, I don't, I don't have that. Well, like when I was going through school, learning how to do this, we didn't have Instagram and I wasn't going to drag my, my parents Polaroid camera in there to get a picture of it, you know, but it, it never dawned on me to do that. But I think that'd be cool for like a student, you know, going through a program, whether it's at a program or a school let your students take home that, that first piece, just put two pieces together, let them take it home and then, you know, bring it back on graduation day or when they complete your online course, like go, go look at, you know, this is where we started and this is where we're at now. That's a super good idea, man. It's, it's, I kind of do something like that, but I love that idea. Like it's, I don't know, man, it's, it's perspective. You help somebody with perspective on their progression. And that means a lot to people, man. Cause you hit them with a photo that they sent you like, you know, six weeks ago. And you're like, do you remember this? Yeah. You remember when you said and you the, couldn't do it and now look yeah. where you're at right now. Exactly. And they're just like, Oh yeah. Wow. That is crazy. And yeah, yeah, it's cool. That, that's like all stuff, man. That would have been so awesome when I was learning. Like I had very little teaching, the teaching I did have, like they, they meant well, but it just wasn't really my style. Um, 
So yeah, stuff like that. Like you've got great ideas, man. It's a, you definitely like have a good style with like connecting with people and teaching them or just mentoring or directing people. It's yeah, it's good, well, it's good one, to chat. With. I love chatting with you. I think about this. that one I kind of stole from my son because one year I got, um, I, I know he's broke because you know, like I support him. Uh, but <laughs> for father's day one year, I get this bag and it's like, it's heavy. I'm like, this thing's got some weight to it. You know, it's like a little gift bag. And I was like, there's no way he went out, you know, with his little broke ass and, and bought something with his $5 allowance, you know, cause he, he can't save it up. He, he's spending it on uh, Roblox and uh, Fortnite. Uh, but it was, you know, it's like, what, what's in here? You know, so I reach in there and there's like gift paper and stuff and I pull it out and it's the weld that he and I did in the garage. Oh, I didn't no realize way. he saved it. Yeah. I didn't realize he saved it. So I thought that was cool as shit. So I've got his very first weld sitting up on my bookshelf that he gave to me for father's day one year. And I was, that's when I kind of got to thinking like, it'd be really cool. Like to still have my first weld. For sure, man. Man, that's such a cool story. I would be destroyed. <laughs> like that's, but he hasn't welded a day uh, since we did. We did a couple lab joints and T <laughs> joints and we, we built a little airplane and he's like, yeah, dad, I'm not into it. It's like, all right, I, I get it. But like, I'm going to get yeah. his ass out here. You know, my daughter too, you know, I'm going to get him out here and like get him welding. Maybe they, he's just not too fond of MIG welding. Uh, I want to show him some of your stuff and maybe I can get him into TIG welding. But like, I think, and I've, I've talked about it several times. I just haven't had the time to do it is like pull him out here and say, okay, now everything that you do with a pen and paper and your, your markers and all this, all this stuff, you can do that with metal and you can do that with a TIG torch or you can do it with a MIG torch. And, you know, there's so many different artists that are using metal as a medium. You know, I kind of want to feed his addiction of art. But, you know, in, in a selfish way, I'd like to see him do, you know, some stuff with metal because I think welding's awesome and it's like the number one trade. But <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> kind, of, kind of selfish, uh, selfish, you know, part of me. But I, I think it'd be kind of cool. A hundred percent, man. Yeah, there's I'm, I'm really glad, like, I went through all the traditional schooling I did. Um even though I, I've niched down so much to just TIG welding, um, I still hold all certification in like, you know, all positions, MIG and everything. Um, and I will keep that up. I'll renew those tickets uh, as long as I can. But like, I don't know. It's, um, it's kind of like, there was like a really cool quote. <laughs> I think it was like Picasso or something. It was like, learn your craft as a professional and then break the rules as an artist. And it was like, you can't do it the other way around. Like it's a really cool road to travel where you learn everything as well and as thoroughly as you can taught by professionals and everything. And then, yeah, put your own spin on it. And with art, especially like your son, like dude, like go down the rabbit hole of options for art. It's infinite. Like you can do sculpture in a million mediums. You can do digital art is so much crazier these days. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just great. It's to kind of feed that mind of a kid that age is, um, is really cool. Yeah. But yeah the, tradi the, the traditional stuff is also very valuable as well. That's one thing I want to do is kind of support their interests because like I was told my whole life growing up, like, don't work with your hands. Don't get into that blue collar nonsense, go get a degree. So it's, I see the value in getting a degree and going that path if that's where your interests lie. But I also see the, the value of becoming an artist or, you know, the value of going into the skilled trades or whatever. So I kind of want to nurture those ideas and say, Hey, you know, I, I get, you know, you want to do artwork and stuff like that. That's really cool. I think, you know, eventually you could be successful with that, but you also need a plan B to supplement your income while you're on that journey, you know, yeah. but not yeah. just completely blow the, blow the dreams out of the water, you know? Yeah, man. Like there's, you know, the, the follow your passion thing is like, you know, a common meme in today's like society. And while it's, I absolutely agree and encourage it a hundred percent there, you got to have a foot in each like, you know, realm of, you know, follow your passion for sure. But there's, there's a way that you can build something while doing something else, whether that's like, you know, what I was doing, working on my artwork, you know, while still doing my normal job and whatnot or like people who practice sports on the side or like, yeah, it's just a, it's super valuable to go either route. And if sometimes you can go the traditional route while having a, like a grand scheme or like a, you know, end goal of where you want to end up is kind of, a, it's pretty beneficial to do it. You get a lot of education from either side that uh, can take you a long way. Yeah. 
That's uh, so you said follow your passion. There's actually a really great video on YouTube that I don't know, probably once a year. I kind of like I, I need that little kick in my ass. And there's a video on YouTube called "What's Your Passion," and it's oh, cool. somebody's taken. Um, who is it? Uh, Joe Rogan and Elliot Hulse and Alan Watts and like compiled some of their like audio clips, but played it through, you know, like a bunch of different video footage. So there's like a guy riding a BMX bike and like Joe Rogan's talking or like Alan Watts is talking while some guy's on a balance beam. Uh, it's really cool. But if you've got the time, um, like go check that video out. It's called what's your passion. Um, oh, a hundred percent. I think awesome. it's like maybe 10, 11 minutes, but it's like a super cool video. And like every cool. once in a while, I'll just jump in the car and like just plug in my plug in my phone and just play the video and throw the phone on the seat. Like I don't, I've I've seen it a hundred times. I just need to listen to that audio and it just like it kicks me in the ass to get me going again. That's great, man. I'd love to check that out. I I, I actually there's a few of those I have stored that are like the the turbo boost, <laughs> like when things are getting a little overwhelming and like or I've just finished something big and want to listen to something like that. It's it's cool. It keeps you on track. Like there's, there's many books, like I'm sure you and I could talk about books like a ton, but like, yeah, man, there's just, there's just so many options in today's day and age with careers and passions that is, that haven't been around before. And yeah, it's, it's cool that that option is out there for people. And I, I love seeing people go after it or like, I love encouraging people to go after it too. Now with, with everything that you have going on, do you ever, you ever get to that point where you're like, I'm overwhelmed and you start kind of like freaking out and you're like, I'm not sure if I can keep doing this. Like it's too much. And then, you know, like, do you ever get to that point where it's like, ah, you know, you got to figure out, you know, just kind of slow down and, and kind of figure out what to do next. Or, you know, like maybe I need to cut some stuff free and, and focus a little bit more on this or kind of change directions. I mean, do you ever, you ever, because you got so much going on, you ever find yourself in that position? Yeah, man, that, that's a really good question because it's a pretty serious topic for me. Um, I've hit overwhelm quite a few times. Um, I had like a pretty bad one, maybe like four or five months ago. That was really hard to get through. Um, you know, you're just constantly pushing and pushing and pushing. And like, I kind of hit a point where I realized I'm like, man, I'm not doing anything for myself. Like, I think like, you know, no time on my bike, no time playing guitar, just goofing around. Like all I'm doing is just pushing and it's super overwhelming, man. It's like kind of, it's actually like kind of alarming to feel it at that level too. Cause that was a, that was a pretty bad stage of overwhelm and I was super burnt out, but like I've never wavered on my mission here. Like with Pacific arc TIG welding, it's a set goal to like get as many people into TIG welding and help as many people out as I can. I never wavered on that. My, I was like, I need to get a bit of myself back so that I can kind of keep up with this. Um, and honestly for me, man, it was like, I needed to get a little bit of that stuff back in my life. Like, okay, I know I really should be editing right now, but like, dude, go put some new strings on your guitar and plug in and like crank the shit up really loud and play for 15 minutes or something like something so small. And I started doing that a little bit more. And like, I was legitimately like, we talked about scheduling all the important stuff I had to do. I put that in there as well. And it was like the same reminders would pop up on my phone. It's like, you get to chill and play guitar today and record some music. And uh, it's, that's been a big save for me, man. Like I really, I needed to continue what I was doing and I needed to find that path, how to get back on it. And that's been the biggest like silver bullet for me to get over a lot of that. Um, yeah, it's almost like just taking a step back. It may seem like a big deal, but you know, to dip out on a day to just, you know, God, just anything, watch a movie. Like I haven't watched a movie in like so long. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, just take a minute, man. Like just you give yourself a break and enjoy some time because like, like I said, I never waver on my time with my kids. That's, that's untouchable, but it was me. It was like, I needed to get something for myself back in it. And that's been a big thing, man. I started producing music again. Um, I toured in a metal band for like 
you know, like a really long time. And so music was like a big part of my life. And then, um, I started like incorporating some of my music in my YouTube videos. So like being able to buckle down and be like, man, today I get to record music. This is going to be awesome. Like, and you know, I've got like a really nice recording suite at my house now for like making music. And it's just been the biggest improvement to like my, how I feel on the week is like, even though I'm getting ex like exhausted trying to keep up with students, I got to film this, I got to film that, I got to email this dude or, you know, whatever. It's all good. Cause today or to, today or whatever, I get to put the headphones on and like play guitar and whatever. So yeah, man, it, like burnout and, and stuff is very common. Um, from a lot I've learned about like being a business owner and stuff, it's, it's really hard. You do a lot of it yourself. You has a lot of like self doubt is massive. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's equally as important to take, you know, it could be whatever, like for somebody, like if you want to go, you know, throw rocks at the beach and like clear your mind, like maybe that's it. Or like, you know, go or like it's just something, right? Like I think anybody who's listening who like has a passion that they're like beating themselves up over trying to stay at, like you got to identify when things are starting to get heavy um, because like, it can really add up, man. I went through some personal stuff this year. Like, uh, it's just, it just became so much and I've never really dealt with that before. So it really freaked me out, but yeah, it was like a matter of really identifying like what was going to move the needle for me to like, you know, actually feel better when I came back to work, which I think is the thing. So I love that. Like the fact that you said, like, you know how you set an alarm to do like all the shit that's got to get done. Like, set an alarm to, Hey, take 20 minutes for me. Yeah. I think that's freaking brilliant because I think I need to do that. Like I got an email the other day. It's like, Hey, renew your fishing license. And I was like, Oh yeah, I got to do that. And it's like, Oh shit. You know, I haven't, I haven't renewed my fishing license in two years. That means I haven't been fishing in almost three, you know, because like wow. the last time I was able to do that, that and that's kind of like my time. Like that's my Zen moment. You know, I used to roll around with a fishing pole in my truck like, oh, there's a lake, boom, you know, just pull over on the side of the road, just start fishing for 20, 45 minutes. And it's like, now I don't have the time for it. But I, I think, you you know, set an alarm. I, I think that's freaking brilliant. And I'm going to steal that from you. I'm going to start setting alarms for me because I dealt with the, the same shit. And it's it's hard. And, like, if you've never dealt with it, you, you don't know how to deal with it. And you don't recognize no. the signs and the symptoms and you get stuck in a rut. And, like, it's a battle of, like, depression and anxiety and like you yep. know it feels overwhelming at times it's, but it's like i still have to go to work i still have to you know provide for my family i still have to spend time with the wife i got to spend time with the kids i've got to put out an episode i've got to you know do this i've got this meeting i've got that meeting and it all just kind of comes to a head and, and it's sometimes it's too much to deal with but i like the fact yeah. that you set a timer or set an alarm to like carve out some time for yourself and i think that's something that Definitely. I need to, I need to start doing that. Yeah. It, it just works for me, man. It's like, I don't know. Like I'm the type of person who like, I'll say like, Oh man, tomorrow uh, I'm just going to like sleep a little more or something like that. Or I'm just going to take, I'm just not going to answer emails for a day or something, but that isn't really what makes me feel better. Like I'm still exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so it's something like fishing for you, man, that like, like really is yours. And that's, that's really important for me. That's actually like, I, I, I use the term move the needle. Cause like I can sleep in a little later and not answer emails for a day. That doesn't move the needle. Like it, this, this stuff is still like going to get me. It's and still there so when you come like, back to it. Yeah. So it's like, man, what is it actually going to be? And for me, it's like music for sure. And jumping on my bike and yeah. So it's, it's been, but it's, it's a matter of making myself do it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, really cool. And I think it's important to like carve out time for yourself. You know, like I'm, I'm always the one to put myself last and I don't know, it's, it's uh maybe that's my Achilles heel It's a blessing and a curse because that, like I, I enjoy helping other people. Um, but yeah, I think like cutting out time for yourself is it's very important. It's a necessity. A necessity is a perfect word for it, man. You can't go without it. It's you may feel like you can, but this shit creeps up on you. Yeah. You get 
like the anxiety and stuff, it's just like, yeah, you push yourself so hard, you're going to hit it at some point. It's, and that's, uh, that's kind of what I went through on Monday. Like I got home Sunday evening and I was like freaking exhausted. And I was like, I don't physically feel well. And like, I've been, you know, drinking lots of water and hydrating and, you know, doing everything I'm supposed to and eating pretty decent. But it was like, I just felt like shit Sunday night. And I was like, I'm not going into work tomorrow. Like I don't feel right. Like I just need to like take time and, you know, like you said, not answer the emails, just relax, you know? So I got to sleep in a little bit. I think I slept until the crack at 8 AM <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had got up, I, I had, you know, I had some coffee and like, I took a shower and I went for a walk for like 45 minutes and it was like, man, that was refreshing. And it, that's all I needed was a couple hours. Cause by like one o'clock, I'd say I was like back to record an episode, but I, I needed that like little block of time to carve out for myself, which was kind of like the, like a good getaway, you know, like a half day just to just, say, you know what? Screw it. Um, this is, it's all about me right now. Yeah. Put everything you, else you aside, can... I wasn't answering DMs, text messages, my phone. Like I left all the notifications just racking up. But like you said, you know, like it was all there when I got back to it. But by the time I got back to it, it was like, okay, now I'm ready to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. And I don't know. It's, uh, it, yeah, it's the most important thing because I think that it's pretty clear to me that like people really appreciate the work you put in to your show for your consistency and your quality and like there, but you taking that time to do that makes it better for people. Like we just talked about buying microphones and like new studios and stuff. That That's a big improvement for sure. But like the quality of you showing up is going to be better when you take the time to mm -hmm. do that. Cause yeah. Yeah. Like you, you use the, the words like put yourself last a lot and that's the epitome of myself in the last like, long stretch here so yeah you gotta do it man get that fishing pole back yeah i, I had to go out for my full-time job i went out and met with an employer yesterday and like on the way back home like it was down the 528 so all i could see was like these perfect little spots to go fishing and i was like damn like i should have just brought my fishing pole with me but it never crossed my mind but so now if i if i go back and meet with that employer again they're out in titusville uh if I go back out that way, I'm definitely taking my rod and reel and, you know, bag of lures. and hundred percent, man. Definitely do that. Set a reminder on your phone to put your fishing pole on the truck. <laughs> Leave the phone in the car and just go, you know, wet a line for a little bit. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start setting some reminders for me. I think that's freaking brilliant. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good thing, man. I think like taking time for yourself is, is the best. Yeah. So now do you, do you kind of set, put yourself on like a specific set schedule because of everything that you have going on? Like, you know, Monday, I'm going to shoot a video Wednesday. I'm going to edit it Thursday. I'm going to put it out. Or, you know, like, do you have a set schedule to kind of organize the chaos? Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. There's like a, like it's a lot of it is dictated by like my students. I have certain students each day of the week. Um, so they all have different time zones cause they're legitimately all over the world. Um, so I got to get people, you know, I kind of plan my day to get people their feedback first thing in their morning, if I can, or at least early in my day. And, um, yeah, so that, that dictates the start. And then it's like, you know, am I do, going to do, you know, where I'm working as a CWS, like, okay, at this day, like, you know, I got to use this coffee break to do that. or You know, lunchtime, I got to do this. And yeah, man, it's, it's super helpful to me because I'll just get overwhelmed and I'm pretty good about not getting sidetracked, but I just don't work on the right things is my problem. So yeah. Yeah. Like really hammering out like my priorities is like a big thing. Um, I say like getting everything I need to do and then putting a number one next to something and then a number two next to something else. And then a number three and so on. It like, it keeps me on track. Cause like I talked about, I just got, a lot happening that yeah i'll just work on the wrong thing and be like i worked all day yeah but i still forgot okay. to yep. do this like it's it's so frustrating i feel like i just work 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 and then it i still don't get my stuff done so that's a that's a big thing is making priorities i think it's like add like i'll do the same thing like you're always working but you're never constantly working on the right thing you know push like you said moving that needle like yeah. I do a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, just, just enough to keep everything from crashing down. For sure, man. Like that 80, 20 rule of like 20% effort oh, yeah. 
like makes up for the 80%. And, and that is what it is for me. It's like, I need to have it written in front of me. Like I sit down in the morning with my coffee and I'm like, I sometimes look at it. Like, I don't even remember writing it. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, I've just like kind of done it. And, but it gives me a great point of like, Oh yeah, right. Okay, cool. Like, boom, done. Check those things off, man. It feels good. And then we have a day where you like really kill it and like have a good day at work, like get a bunch of stuff done and, or help some people out or whatever, like it's effective. It's probably like, yeah. Cause you're going to spend the time doing a bunch of stuff anyway. I might as well try and make it, yeah, make that, it hit. That's one of the things that I like to do is I, I've got little notepads laying, I mean like everywhere and I'll just like cruise through them. But one thing I like to do and as, as silly as it sounds is just make a little box and put a task next to it. And it, I don't have them like written down number one, number two, number three, but like as I go through my day, it's like, okay, just, you know, checking a box or putting a line through an item, it, it kind of gives you that sense of accomplishment. And then you can kind of, I prioritize as I go. It's like, okay, what's the most pressing matter? Knock that one out. Okay. I can't work on this one yet. Let me move to the next one and just kind of, I like putting checks in boxes. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it's, that sounds like a great system if, if it works for you. Like, and yeah, that, I mean, that kind of stuff, it feels good. Like to cross something off the list. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. Okay, cool. I, I, I made, I made today happen. Like I, yeah. I got some stuff done. Yeah. Next week is going to be a beast. Cause I got to go up and teach a group of high school kids. And it's like, I'm not going to have time to do my normal schedule to get my YouTube episode done. So I've got to edit and film prior to pretty, yeah, pretty much two days early in the week. And that's going to be a lot. But uh, again, that that's the only thing that'll keep me able to do it is being that organized. So just got to do it, man. I got to take the time, even though it's so tempting. Like I'm just wrecked by the end of the day. And I'm like, I just want to have a shower and go to bed so bad, but just let me take 10 minutes, like 10 minutes, pen and paper, a couple sticky notes on my computer screen. So I can't forget it. And it's like, boom, I'm done. It's, yep. it's so worth the effort. <laughs> I feel you on that one. Like I got, I got to start like getting some stuff edited and released because I'm doing the, uh, like I was telling you, I'm doing the KWI event next weekend. Uh, yeah. the 21st through the 22nd of April. And so like, I know that while I'm out of town, it's going to be harder to edit and record and all that other stuff. So I want, I, I kind of want to crank that stuff out and get it pre-scheduled so that I can, you know, kind of go up there and be in the moment and not have to worry like, okay, you know, like as soon as this is over, I got to run back to the hotel room and I got to like edit this and put that out. Like I want to try and knock all that stuff out before I go on the trip because I'm, I'm awesome, taking a couple man. extra days off to, to just kind of just, go hang out in Kentucky. So I'm doing the, uh, the Buffalo trace distillery tour, uh, and Amazing. then just kind of relax and, you know, be in the moment and just tune everything else out, you know, no emails from work. And I don't have to worry about clients for, you know, my side business or anything else that's going on. Like just kind of take a couple days and just, you know, exhale. Do it, man. That's, that's so cool. I, I did like an epic camping trip last summer and, um, I don't mean to steal away from your story or oh, no, anything, but I like, it was the same deal. I knew I was going to be gone and like, this was going to be a rad trip. And I did it. I pushed like a bunch of student workout ahead of time, moved a couple student days around, produced like a really good YouTube episode, scheduled it. So I was actually like chilling on a dock, like drinking a coffee first thing in the morning with zero cell phone reception, like way out in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, I'm good. Like mm -hmm. my stuff just went live. Like it's the work I did is like doing its work for me right now. It's yeah. feels good, man. It's yeah. just good. I wish I could be that on all the time. It's, it's just kind of like, like uh, you ever seen so that I, show? I think it's on Hulu. It's called mayor of Kingstown. No, oh, no, dude, Actually, it's, a wait, freaking, I, it's an awesome series, but like that's the, okay. the main character. That's like his cool thing is he's got like this cabin out in the middle of nowhere and his favorite, like, favorite thing ever is the spot where as he's driving down the road his cell phone just goes boop no service awesome because he's unreachable like it, once he gets up into the you know the area where his little cabin is like nobody can call him nobody's emailing him nobody's text messaging him like you have to go out there and see him because like everything that he's doing you know he's like always like boom 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 right right on everything and that's kind of uh. like his little moment to get away from everything it's like boop no service wow that would be unreal. Yeah. It's, it's a good feeling to, to do that. It's, uh, it's hard to do it though. Yeah, it is. It's just so, it's just so easy to keep working and keep like, whether it's in the actual, like in the shop working with people in person or 
working on my online stuff is it's like, I, it's always there. I just want to work. I just want to keep going. But mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, that's another part of that quality time. I come home and I'm just like, you know, okay, I'm good. Like I <laughs> hung out with the, with the boys for like, you know, a few nights and just blew a bunch of steam off and like partied or did whatever, swam in the lake and felt great. And you come home and you're like, cool, back to it. Let's yeah. do this. And yeah, yeah, it's worth it super worth it <laughs> definitely so like with your your workshop that you're doing are you going or covering different alloys are you doing steel stainless and aluminum or are you like specifically one type of material um which workshop your your online tig welding fundamentals class that you're you're pushing out okay yeah so that that's just aluminum right now um it's like a fully committed full-blown aluminum program um from all the associated gear that somebody could conceivably have in their shop. Um, and that, that's kind of like a fun thing about it is I give such a breakdown on different torch setups, like water cool, not water cool. Like it's legitimately designed for whatever you have on hand. Can it run consistently? Do you have gas? Like you're, you're going to be fine in the program. So it's like the program's broken down in a way that whatever people's setups are like, you know, whether you, you get a thumb trigger, like yeah, I'm going to teach you, like you're good. I got your settings covered. Like everything's there for you for everything we do. And yeah, that was my goal. It was like aluminum. Like there's been a lot of people who enjoyed the first iteration of it. And like I said, I learned a lot from it. So yeah, it's like, let's just do this up even better. Like just the textbook, I can't wait to, I want to get it printed for people just because I put it on my Instagram and people really want to pick it up. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm going to figure out a way to like, I got to redo it so that somebody can just get the textbook and just enjoy it. Cause it's, yeah, it's cool, man. It's like a resource for somebody that's looking to get into something like that, or even people that are already got some experience and they really just want to like sharpen the sword to like, you know, get even more game with what they're doing. Like there is a ridiculous amount of resources in that. It's just like, yeah, from page to page, it's just like everything laid out as clearly as possible. And yeah, with lots of like cool flames and like cool arrows and like awesome stuff that just spices it up and makes it look really awesome. So yeah. No, that'd be cool. I can't wait till you like roll that out. <laughs> it's I'll, I'll i'll send you some stuff um like after we finish this so you can just have a look at it it's it's fun man it's a lot of fun i'm pretty like i gotta say of all the work i did for the program like the thing is like i said 22 video lessons long like all the scripting editing like voiceover and all the stuff i did i'm most proud of the textbook <laughs> it's been a lot of fun to put it together Sounds like it. So where, where can people get a hold of the, the TIG welding fundamentals course that you're putting out? Uh, Pacific arc TIG welding.com. It's um, everything on there. There's like an option on there to check out the program. Um, and all of the information's on there. Um, the different tiers that I'm currently offering. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm making room to like take on more students soon. Um, my wait list is currently like, uh, shoot, I'm like beginning of September right now. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to figure out ways to take on more people. Um, but yeah, all updates. I'm actually, I had a blog on there that I haven't updated in like a really long time and I'm going to start doing that again. So yeah, if anybody's interested, like just check out the website, there's a good idea of what it is there and then just follow along, follow the blog, follow the YouTube channel and stuff. And everything I get up to is, is there. <laughs> Cool. Where, where else can people follow you? Like, go ahead, drop your YouTube channel, your Instagram, all that stuff. Yeah. Thanks man. Pacific arc TIG welding across everything is Pacific arc TIG welding on YouTube, Pacific arc TIG welding on Instagram. Um, I do have Facebook, but it's, it's a little tricky for me to keep up with that one. Um, but yeah, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, like email on my website, like go to the website, there's an email form um, that goes to, me personally and i try and hit everybody back that i can so it's yeah people want to check out what i'm doing head there cool well dusty it's been a pleasure talking to you once again on the podcast i appreciate you uh you coming out here kind of sharing your experience and stories and the new program you're rolling out to get more people interested in the wonderful world of welding uh, jason like thank you man i really 
appreciate you inviting me and just wanted to hang out again. It's like, what you're doing is great, man. Keep it up. A lot of people really value what you're doing. There's a, there's a lot of people that I know who like really dig what you're doing. So thank you, man. Likewise, man. I appreciate it. Sick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks once again for tuning into the show. Be sure to check out Dusty with Pacific Arc TIG Welding on YouTube and Instagram if you haven't already. You can check out arcjunkies.com to pick up show merch and stream all past and present Arc Junkies episodes. Hope to see you all this weekend in Kentucky at the competition. Be sure to stop by my table and register for the giveaway. Also, make sure to tune in tomorrow for another edition of Just the Tip Tuesday. Stay safe out there, and until next time, make every well better than your last.